All right, folks, check it out. Today, we're gonna have a really interesting episode. We're gonna talk to you about service dogs and how we're helping to connect service dogs with veterans in need, veterans that are suffering from PTSD, veterans that have suffered physical disabilities as a result of being over in a combat zone, and we've decided to join up with a nonprofit called Battleground 22, and we're gonna go ahead and speak with people who work with Battleground 22, speak with an actual veteran who's gonna be the recipient of a service dog, and also speak with the training director of a company called Jasiphony Canine Services out of Wisconsin, who is the one that's actually out there training these dogs to be amazing service dogs. So stay tuned for this episode. We're gonna interview a couple of great guests, and you're gonna find a little bit more about how you can help out when it comes to connecting service dogs with veterans, because we have something special at the end of this video we can tell you how you can help this process all right stay tuned for the episode all right before we go any further what we're trying to do is spread the word and let you know about these amazing organizations like battleground 22 how it's a nonprofit, and show you exactly where the money's going and exactly how it's going to help veterans like jeremy now if you want to help out and you also want to help get your dog trained to be the best that it can be service dog qualified so you can take it anywhere with you then i highly recommend you check out our courses at diyk9.com now there's more to the story and that is if you use coupon code MEMORIAL20, a huge amount of the profits that we make are going to go directly to Battleground 22, which is specifically going to be slotted for the program where we're training service dogs with the help of just Siphony Canine Services to get those service dogs in the hand of veterans in need. So again, if you go to DIYK9.com, you use coupon MEMORIAL20, not only are you going to save money yourself, but you're going to help veterans out in the process. So it's a win-win-win for everybody involved. I really hope you uh, join us in this effort and at the same time, get your dog trained to be the best that can be. So thanks for watching. Let's get back into the video. So now we're going to check in with a veteran named Jeremy. Now Je Jeremy's going to tell you a little bit about his story, a little bit about why he needs a service dog and what he plans to do with that service dog. So let's check in with Jeremy. All right. So we're joined now with Mr. Jeremy. Jeremy, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us uh, where you're from and a little bit about you. Uh, my name is Jeremy Doody. I am from Southern Illinois. I am a veteran of the United States Navy. Um, disabled veteran, and uh, I served on the USS Ronald Reagan, CVN-76. Uh, I was an aviation ordnance man, and basically we dealt with bombs, missiles, rockets, and uh, loading aircraft for aircraft military operations, and um, did that for about four years. That's, that's a little bit about myself. Perfect, perfect. And I mean, what we really want to focus on is we got Memorial Day, you know, upon us. I'm interested in um, this whole thing you have going on with Battleground 22, how you got connected with them and uh, what you're hoping to achieve by working with them. I was notified of Battleground 22 uh, from my therapist at the VA that I see for PTSD therapy. And he, she noticed, notified me that they have... Uh, a dog program there that uh, has been known to help alleviate PTSD symptoms. Uh, I was a little weary at first, very nervous that I didn't know if it was really going to help. Uh, I did a little bit of research before I actually made the phone call. And uh, once I made that phone call, talked to Gregory Pete, uh, president of Battleground 22. He basically uh, told me everything that they can do and how it's helped other veterans. And it really calmed my nerves, calmed my anxiety about the whole situation. And I actually became excited for, you know, for the opportunity at, for once in my life. Uh, yeah. The uh, excitement is something that is very dull whenever you deal with the symptoms of PTSD. Uh, sure. Everything's very dull in your life. You, know, you don't really see the bright side of things. Uh, so the, ask, the the prospect of getting my dog from Battleground 22 has really brought a lot of excitement and uh, I look forward to working with Battleground 22. Yeah, amazing. And what do you know about the dog that uh, you hope to receive once it's fully trained? Uh, from, one, from what I understand, uh, the dog is going to be able to uh, see whenever I'm having anxiety attacks, the dog's going to be able to understand uh, if I'm feeling upset, angry, or just having flashbacks, you know. Yeah. Uh, I deal with nightmares. 
and uh, nightmares uh, nightly. And uh, when I wake up from those nightmares, I'm uh, struggling. Uh, you know, your blood pressure is high. Your your pulse is racing. Yeah. So uh, I know that she's going to be able to, you know, get my mind off that. Uh, kind of allow me to see uh, see things happily again. Sure, a hundred percent. And now you told me something special when you talked earlier. There's something that you plan to do with her that I think is really cool. Uh, she's going to be your battle buddy at work. Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about that. Uh, I'm actually a mail carrier with the United States Postal Service. Um, when I got out of the military, you know, I did normal, you know, you know, slow jobs, nothing exciting. And then I decided, you know, I want to go back to, you know, working for my country again. And I found the best way of doing that would be with the post office. And uh, so I'm off on my own, you know, delivering mail every day. And I still deal with the same symptoms that I told you about earlier. Uh, but now uh, I'm going to be one of the first uh, mail carriers in the country, the first in Illinois, to have a PTSD service dog walking with me on my route and uh, delivering mail. And people are going to see that, you know, see what uh, service dogs can do for us firsthand. Yeah, I'm excited for you. I mean, I know firsthand being a police canine handler, what it's like to have a dog with you 24-7. And now you're going to get to experience that. You're going to just have your ride or die buddy with you. And I think it's just going to be awesome. Um, just having someone with you on your daily route, dropping off mail. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be super cool. And you might even need that because uh, we always say when you have a dog, especially one like a Belgian Malinois, you need uh, to give them a job to do. And now she's going to have a job, not just to take care of you and look out for your, your well-being, but, you know, go on those long walks with you delivering mail, which is super cool. So I'm excited Absolutely. to see that. I'm very so, excited about it. Yeah. So I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And I really hope that we can uh, – Get the funds together to help fund the training for Miss Athena. Uh, I believe it's her name, right? The Belgian Malinois. Correct. Yeah. So and, the goddess and, of war. there you go. And we're going to get her trained up and uh, or get the funding so that we can get her trained and get her to you. And we hope to check in with you maybe in a, a couple months from now when you have her check in with you on your route and just see how everything's going. I'd be happy, for, I'd be happy to do that. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much again. I really appreciate your time, Jeremy, and we look forward to seeing you in the future, except next time I want to see you with uh, Athena hanging out there right next to you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. All right. We'll see you on the next one. All right. Now we're going to check in with Jesse Smith. Jesse Smith is the owner of Jessiphany Canine Services out of Wisconsin, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his dog training program, his background, and how he's able to train these dogs to become incredible service dogs. So let's check in with Jesse. My name is Jesse Smith. I'm a just a South Georgia boy that lives in Iron Ridge, Wisconsin, started a kennel uh, October of nine, nine years ago, this October in 2014 with my wife, Tiffany. And um, we call our business just Stephanie, just Stephanie Canine Services. So that's uh, funny, funny how we how we moved from Georgia to Indiana and all the way to Wisconsin. We went the wrong way, I think. <laughs> Probably. So uh, what do you do there at just Stephanie Canine Services? Uh, so we have a, a we have a bunch of different things we do. Uh, one of them is you know we, we have a pet boarding facility. We do the boarding trains. We do some some uh, some very very light uh, obedience and behavior modification work. But the gist of our business is police dog training and then service dog training that we do for two different five hundred one c threes. One of them being Troops First Foundation out of Maryland, and the other one being Battleground Twenty Two out of uh, out of Indiana. So we've been we've been doing their service dogs at least for Troops First. We've been doing their dogs since since 2013 perfect and then give us an idea like what what the veterans are like the ones that are receiving these service dogs what kind of issues are they dealing with and how do the service dogs help them no I, absolutely i mean obviously the injuries but you know some of them are visible some of them are not so visible we obviously we, we've all dealt with gentlemen or ladies that have ptsd or, or some kind of traumatic brain injury so we're dealing with that. That is the maybe the unknown. Like we we look at them, we personally look at them and they look normal, but they're really not normal, or their their normal is different than ours. So there's that unknown factor. But then you know, obviously there's the visuals where we have a double amputee, we did a quadruple amputee, we did we do a lot of bilaterals. So it just determines. It just depends on 
where, what what conflict they were in, uh, what what how their injury was sustained, and and then the mag- magnitude of what uh, what service they might need from us or from a dog. Sure. Now tell us a little bit about the type of dogs that you're getting. Where are you getting them from, and what kind of training do they receive? Sure. So uh, obviously, I, a lot of times I get the feedback like, "Hey, why don't we do? You know, why don't you do more stuff with American dogs, or, or why don't we do? Why don't you raise the puppies yourself?" And for me, that I, I, I stress so much about the turnaround. When I meet someone who's in need, I don't want to. I don't want them to wait two years or eighteen months or fourteen months for for the right dog. If that makes sense, so there's a ton of organizations that do a fabulous job out there, nonprofit or for profits, where they raise the puppies and they take the eighteen months to two years and they do a really fabulous job. I'm not knocking that aspect of how it gets done. I just choose for me when I meet someone, I want to have a ninety to one hundred twenty day turnaround. I want to find the right dog that matches their specific needs and then train it and get it in their hands so that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not like a long ways away. So right. for that reason, over the last 10, 11, over the last 10, 11, 12 years, I've, I've made some really nice friends overseas in Europe and Hungary and Czech Republic uh, and Holland and Germany. And those guys and girls that I deal with when I, when I'm looking for a specific dog for a specific person, whether it's a, whether it's a Mao or a Dutchie or a German short air pointer or, uh, a, you know, a, 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 you know, whatever, any kind of breed. I'm not breed specific. I do have a couple of, full core of my cores, but we, we lean on those people and say, hey, what do you have that would fit this need? And, and when can I get it? And then what age is it going to be? Like sometimes we're looking at a 13 to 17 month old steel. Sometimes I might buy a two year old. So I might buy a three year old. It depends on what the cost is ratio is versus how fast can I put it in the guy's hands or girl's hands? Cause that's where it needs to be. It don't need to be with me. It needs to be with them. Sure. And so we had a chance to speak with Jeremy and he um, is going to be, when we get Athena trained up, when you're training Athena, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Athena? What kind of breed is she and uh, what kind of personality traits does she have? And you know, where is she going to do well? Sure. So she's a two year old Belgian Malinois. And, the, and, 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 you know, when you first say the breed, people go, oh my God, you're going to put up, you're going to make a Malinois service dog. This one is literally her off switch is stuck in she's stuck in one. Like she is <laughs> she's just super, super sweet. She's hung it, she loves kids, she loves other dogs. She has zero drive to do anything related to work. Like she just wants to hang and 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 do she I mean she'll do some service dog tasks, she'll do some specific things, pick up stuff, help him get out of the chair. Very specific for his injuries, but she's not gonna she's not running off. Like she's not trying to bunch of bite a bunch of things. Like she's just a nice, chill dog that's, that just loves attention. And you actually have to make her get off of you. If that makes sense. She just wants to be right with you at all times, which is what these veterans a lot in a lot of cases that's what they want. They want a dog yeah. that's going to be their new. You know, I always, I always, one way to describe it is they they miss their buddies, they miss their stick, they miss their backup, and this dog's going to be his backup. Like she, he's going to be, he's going to call me and go, how do I get her away from me? Like she just wants to be with you at all times. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. That's great. And so what's a typical turnaround time uh, once Athena gets in your hands and they get lined up with a particular veteran. And, and maybe we should talk about that. You are specifically taking a dog like Athena and making sure she's a good fit for a guy like Jeremy, uh, because depending upon what injuries they have, you know, we got to make sure the personalities mesh. Correct. Yeah. So, so basically, my unwritten policy is I want to I want to have from from day of selection. So we put, we we talk to a veteran, we get his core values, what he needs, what he wants, what he's dealing with, and then I start thinking about personality, demeanor, temperament, those kinds of things. What matches? And once we make that decision, hey, this dog matches you. Come take a look if you want to, or let me see some videos. Let me see her in action. See him in action. Um, and then once we make those final decisions, which might take two weeks, might take two months. But once that decision is made, this is the dog for you. Then I want to I want to do a ninety day to a one twenty day turnaround. So basically, I do thirty days of of basic and advanced obedience, thirty days of in town uh, core specific task specific training. What do they need? How are we going to make them do those kinds of things? Take the dog town, make it ride in the car really nice. Spend time visiting with other people so the dog sees that that's going to be the job is to be out in town and be and be active in your in your assignments. And then we do 30 days in-home training with me or one of my trainers inside the house. And then once the dog passes the in-home training, you know, we, then we knock, we, we knock out the, 
do you want it on the bed? Do you want it on the furniture? Obviously, PP outside. Don't get in the trash can. Leave the other yeah. dogs alone. This is how you get in and out of doors. Like we, we, we get all that stuff done, and then we do the delivery, which we do for us. We do a, a five day delivery process where the veteran comes in, works with us. We work on the transition, transitioning from me. The other dog listens to me great because I've been handling leash for twenty three years. But go listen to him. He handled a dog for ten seconds. Like you got to do the job for him. So we do that transition. Takes a day or half or so. And then uh, once we get some of the core value stuff done, the task oriented jobs, then we get on a plane or we get in a car and we fly back with the veteran to his house, make sure the dog gets along with his family, his kids, knows how he wants it to operate in his work environment. If he's if he has the job and he goes to work every day and then we we disappear when we fly away and uh, hopefully we don't get calls back. I'm, I'm real. I'm real particular. Just like I'm sure you are, I like to know everything that's going wrong uh, ahead, of, you know, as they happen. So if hey, the dog's not doing this or dog's doing that, I don't like for them to compound into into. Oh my gosh, we have a problem, and we here's all the 13 things that we don't like. So you know, obviously there's always things that need to be transitioned. So we're on top of it 24 seven for the next two to three weeks after that to make sure everything is buttoned up like we expected and like they expected. Man, that's amazing. And, you know, when we talk sidebar and you're saying again now, it just you can tell how how passionate you are about it and how, you know, the number one priority is that you, you're turning in like a finished product that the customer and in this case, the veteran is going to be happy with. And I can't, you know, stress enough, too, that one of the things that sets us apart that also sets you apart is that that after the fact that, you know, I always say I don't care who trains your dog. No one can ever train your dog to be 100%. The individual owner of that dog needs to take that final two, three, four, five percent and to get that bonding right and to make sure that the dog listens to them. And, and really, we, at that point, we're training the owner how to maintain the dog. Like, in, in other words, you're going to build a race car, but now we got to teach him how to drive it. So he can, you know, not uh, screw up the transmission and drive the thing into a wall. So I'm really I'm really happy to hear that you're doing that. And uh, it, it's awesome. Well, you know, and I won't get into how we got here, but my whole mantra, uh, my wife and I is, has been do more. Like, how do I do more for whatever? So I, I was I was in the Army. No big deal. That was no nothing fancy. Uh, I was a cop in Georgia and I was like, all right, how do how do I do more for my community, for for my you know, my department, my, you know, the guys that, that, that need me. And then yeah. I went to work for the Marine Corps and I worked for the Marine Corps for six years. And it was like, okay, that that's my do more. Then it was like, all right, well, where, where can, I'm not doing enough for the world. Like, how do I do more than that? And I went to Indiana and then I was like, all right, well, I, I'm doing a lot here, but I can do better. Like I can do more for people. Well, I think you're doing it, man. And um, I, I think what you guys are doing is wonderful. And, I, and I'm trying that's to help what we out. Do. And, I mean, that's, and, that's it. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. And I think now that we're getting your message out there, uh, anyone that's interested in what you do or that wants to support the cause, they can check you out at Just Symphony Canine Services. We'll post a link in the description below. And of course, reach out to Battleground 22 if you want to provide some funding, which is going to go directly to helping veterans get dogs trained by Mr. Jesse Smith, who you see here, and his whole team uh, of trainers. And as you can see, like this is not... Uh, this is the real deal, folks. We're talking about real trainers, real veterans, a real nonprofit, and we're putting all the pieces together to uh, really turn some lives around and, and help uh, make life better for uh, veterans who need us. So a big thank you to you, Jesse. Really appreciate your time. I know you got to get back to training some dogs, and so do I. So really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, we couldn't do it without you, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to be uh, for, you to, for you to help us out. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. We're going to try to do more of this. We're going to try to check in with Jeremy as we go forward, see how he's getting along with Athena, see what that looks like, a day in the life, him taking his dog on a walk with him out there delivering mail in a neighborhood near you. And uh, again, if you haven't gone there already, make sure you check out DIYK9.com. An amazing suite of online courses help you train your dog from zero to hero. Everything you need from a puppy to an adult on leash and off leash is there for you. Don't forget to use coupon code MEMORIAL20 so that we can send those profits right on over to Battleground 22 so that we can get these service dogs trained up and get them in the hands of veterans like Jeremy so that they can live their best life uh, after dealing with all the trauma that can happen on the battlefield. So thank you again for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the courses.